Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Writing Coaches of Montana extra supplemental training, which we will make quick, but it is very important about how coaching aligns uh, with our efforts as an organization to embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion. So let me introduce myself here and Dr. Chin as well. My name is Cassie Sheets. I'm the Executive Director of Writing Coaches of Montana. We welcome you here. Dr. Chin, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Beverly Chin. I'm so glad to be with you today. I am a Vice President of Writing Coaches of Montana and a Professor Emeritus of English at the University of Montana. Welcome. Thank you very much. We're glad to be here with you all today. And we're just going to hop into why are we doing this training? Why is this important for coaches to sit where, here with us for a few moments and think about these things? Well, mainly, we've received feedback from some teachers and students that coaches um, would really benefit from being privy to these conversations of how inclusiveness is so important in their classrooms, how teachers have been trained to do this, and how similarly coaches having a sense of privilege coming into classrooms and working with young people could benefit and strengthen their coaching approaches by having an understanding of these topics. So our WCM vision says that we envision that all Montana students think critically and communicate effectively through writing. So when we say that, it's really important that we think about all Montana students, not just students that might be similar to us as our own cultural background, but also those who are different than us. We want to be an effective organization for all students. So it's really important that we're thinking about all the different types of students that we're going to be working with. And our WCM code of conduct that volunteer coaches sign um, says coaches are expected to respond to students with respect, patience, tact, and consideration and to treat all children equally, regardless of gender, orientation, race, religion, culture, or abilities. And what's so interesting about coaching is we are not asking you to change your personal beliefs, your ideology, your politics. You're inevitably going to be working with students who are different than you and who hold different values than you. And it's not your place um, to judge or change their mind, but rather to help them better express themselves. So that's why we build this understanding into our code of conduct. So Beverly, what do you want to say here? Our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion relates directly to our definition of multicultural education. James Bank is a well-respected leader in multicultural education. And his definition of multicultural education, I think, is so important to us as an organization. Multicultural education incorporates the idea that all students regardless of their gender, sexual orientation, social class, and ethnic, racial, or cultural characteristics should have an equal opportunity to learn in school. As I read that, you can see that it resonates directly with our vision and our code of conduct. Thank you, Beverly. So just a little bit of research connection so you can understand um, why cultural inclusion is so important in terms of academic success. Um, so students can only learn when they feel emotionally supported in the classroom. This has been shown over and over again. So if a student is not feeling like they're understood culturally, that is a direct barrier to not only social emotional development, but academic development as well. Students from minority backgrounds, and we will define in a moment here what we mean by that, um, have disproportionate academic challenges due to some of these reasons. Sometimes it's systemic exclusion. Um, think about if you're a new immigrant and you don't speak English and you come to this nation, language barrier just within the curriculum is a huge barrier. Um, unconscious bias from adults. So that could include teachers, administrators, counselors, and coaches who affect their academic journey. And when we say unconscious bias, what the most important thing here is, this is often not intentional or overt. It's just that we each individually have a cultural perception that we walk through the world with based on our own identity and our own experiences. And we can't possibly understand everyone else's necessarily. And that's why we need to have a growth mindset and be able to learn about different perspectives, which can then hopefully positively affect students. And then because of these barriers, decreased self-esteem can then sort of snowball effect to then um, adding to that disproportionate academic challenge from um, students from minority backgrounds. On the flip side, culturally inclusive mentorship is an effective way to increase students' academic success, which is so exciting because when coaches um, joining these conversations with us, and this is just a conversation starter for a lifetime of, 
uh, growth and learning together as it, within our organization. Um, when we do this well, when we start to understand people from different cultural backgrounds, we can really make a huge difference um, in students' lives, which is such a privilege. And Cassie, if I could add to that last part, that's one of the wonderful aspects of Writing Coaches of Montana, inviting all types of community members from all walks of life and all kinds of backgrounds and experiences into the classrooms because the students also see the diversity of the communities in which they live and the teachers see the diversity of, of support that they have within the community. So we all learn and benefit together, uh, the students, the coaches, the teachers, the administrators, and of course the community members. So I'm so excited about the diversity of the coaches that we have within Writing Coaches of Montana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Beverly. Couldn't have said it better. So important. So one of the things that they say in research is that um, these types of trainings are more effective if people understand sort of the cultural makeup of the groups that they're going to be working with. So we thought it was important. We drew from the Office of Public Instructions data here to show the background of race and ethnicity of students in Montana. Now, what I thought was really interesting is, um, you know, uh, quite a few students, obviously the background about three quarters identify, self-identify as white racially, um, but that's a whole quarter of students who do not identify that way. So there's a vast diversity, um, obviously the biggest group being American Indians, but many other groups as well there. And then as Beverly so pointedly uh, discussed with me before we hopped onto this recording, there's diversity within these groups, of course. There's intersectional um, understandings of identity. So based on class, based on um, heritage, based on geography, there's so many different ways that even within these groups, but it's really important to understand that there is no typical Montana student. You can come into a classroom and you might meet a totally different variety of student that you do one day from the next. And that's important as coaches and why we're having these conversations. So what does a multicultural classroom in Montana look like in terms of languages? You can see the diversity of languages that are represented. And I think this is particularly important when we think about the writing coaching that we are doing with students. The reason why we ask students to read aloud their writing and we as coaches listen is because the students are able to articulate differently than perhaps in, in writing where their grammar or their spelling or their sentence structures might be directly affected by their native language. So it's really important that we always focus on the ideas in the organization as students are crafting and revising their writing, if we were to focus on spelling and grammar and punctuation, we might have biases that we didn't realize. And um, it's based on perhaps the native language of a student. And so in, in different languages, syntax is different or their sound system, of course, is different. And so when the students are grappling with a new language that they're learning, especially when the new language, of course, is in English, we want to be really mindful that we, we are respecting their ideas and their organization. And um, that's the most important aspect of our writing coaching experiences with our students. But look at the diversity of languages that are here. And I just wish I were more multilingual for sure. And I always respectful of students who are learning second and third and fourth languages, whether they're from home or from their own travel experiences. It's, it's something to be seen as a value added, not as a language deficit. Thanks, Beverly. And I think it's so interesting. It's so important to see in that biggest chunk there of languages of impact beyond English and Montana for students is uh, Native American languages, plural, because there is a wide diversity of different tribes and languages from Indigenous peoples in Montana. So even within, again, these blocks, we're going to have diversity in, in, in the ways that our students are communicating, which is fascinating and wonderful. So it's so important that we as writing coaches and we as an organization are very careful not to make assumptions about a student's culture or ethnicity based on physical appearance. Um, I mean, I, I am Chinese American, um, but I've had situations in which people have assumed I'm an international student because I look different on the surface than other people around me. And um you know, or people assume that I'm an immigrant or people have said, how did I learn to speak English so well? And well, English is my native language. It's my first and pretty much only language. Um, and of course, I'm not 
angry or upset that people are making these assumptions, but I very carefully say, I am an American citizen and, and um, I am part of the, the culture here. Um, and, and also to be very mindful too, that um, we don't generalize uh, a cultural stereotype, whether it be negative or positive stereotypes. So for example, I'll use the concept of Asian Americans that we don't want to assume that all Asian Americans are good at math or all Asian Americans are overachievers or that they're all docile and uh, subservient. So we just wanna be mindful of how we've grown up in our own societies and our own experiences. And we don't want to make assumptions about a student's culture or ethnicity based on a physical appearance. There are people who um, are Pacific Islanders and they have blonde hair and pale skin, but so on the surface, they wouldn't look like a Pacific Islander based on a different assumption or Native Americans. So we just wanna be very sensitive to surface appearances and then internally who the person truly is as well. And the beautiful thing is you get to know your students through conversation, right? And you allow them to guide the conversation based on their writing interests. So you don't need to worry about um, making those assumptions because instead you get to engage in genuine conversation with them, driven by what they feel comfortable with, they're passionate about. And that's how you genuinely get to know your students is through that coaching process that we help train you on, which is wonderful. So when we say inclusion, like we said before, there's a diversity on diversity of the different types of students that you're gonna get to know. So um, the idea of gender, um, obviously, there's what is traditionally in our society known as boys and girls, but also singular they pronouns um, have been around for a very long time historically and have come back into common uh, vocabulary as of late. And again, we're not asking anyone to change their personal understandings of gender, but what we are requiring is that we respect students for the ways that they identify themselves. Um, religion, again, we don't wanna make assumptions about someone's religion, um, it can be practiced very differently than another person's politics. Again, I help students all the time on essays that I don't agree with politically, which is such a great critical thinking skill for me to develop as a lifelong learner. Um, abilities, right? We never ever assume anything about a student's um, wholeness as a student and their ability or their intelligence because it looks completely different based on different types of abilities, um, which we talked about in our original training as well. Languages, as Dr. Chen referenced, and, uh, you know, as a member of the LGBT, LGBT community, um, I would never want to make assumptions about someone's orientation. And sometimes students will share that information as understanding part of their identity in the writing that they're trying to communicate and the theses that they're trying to put forth. But this, this list is infinite. We could put any topic on here and culture and ways that people identify are constantly evolving. And part of working with youth, youth, it's so exciting to watch them as a generation come up with new ways to express themselves. So it's important for us to be um, inclusive and welcoming of all types of people across all of these categories. I so appreciate, Cassie, what you said about um, working with students in their writing and our commitment to inclusion and cultural sensitivity and diversity. When, when we think about working with students on their persuasive pieces of writing, through our original training, we always are emphasizing, of course, that we're trying to help the student articulate in writing better what their perspectives are on this sensitive issue. That doesn't mean that we, the coach, uh, agree or disagree with something that the student is saying. We try to help the student become more powerful, more articulate, more persuasive, and accomplish their purpose in their audience in their writing. So this is very, very parallel. Um, to this aspect of inclusion. We, we, we're here to support the students. We're here to listen to the students and develop that relationship with them. And uh, we don't want to pry. We aren't trying to have them reveal things that they're not comfortable revealing to us. We're there to support them in whatever ways that they wish to share information mm -hmm. about themselves or their communities and families. Very nice. Okay, so what if I messed up? Guess what? No one is perfect and that's a good thing, right? Um, these things are gonna happen and it's about embracing that idea of, oh, I'm gonna be learning along the way here because like I said, intergenerationally, you know, things change, cross-culturally things are different and we're gonna come into moments where we learn something new and that means that we're gonna be imperfect in those moments. So as an example, I accidentally misgender a student um, 
my upbringing, I assume that this person's going to be using she pronouns and they're using they pronouns. So, oh, shoot, I just called them she. What do I do now in this moment? I'm really sorry. I meant to say they and keep going with coaching because it's I get to honor the fact that I made a mistake and demonstrate that as a mentor to the student that the, even as an adult, we're going to be doing those things and that's okay. Um, but I don't harbor on it. I don't make it about me. I proceed with coaching and try to be as respectful as possible with that student moving forward. So we're modeling a growth mindset, which is one of our organizational values. Being a part of this community means that we're embracing lifelong learning. And so demonstrating that to students is, is very important as well. What I like about what you just said also, and thank you for sharing that example from your own experience, Cassie, is that we're then modeling for the student how a student can then respond in terms of other interactions that they may have in their own lives. So by the way in which we, the adult coach, empathetic, trustworthy, uh, kind, we we are showing how other adults can respond effectively. And that becomes a model too for students and their own communication skills. Very good. So in summary, coaching only works if teachers trust us with their students. And we have that rapport and relationship because the teachers are inviting us in as coaches, as guests, to be supportive of both the teachers and their students. And also, coaching only works if the students feel supported by us because we're adults, we're the trusted other individuals. We are there to help them become more effective thinkers and communicators and um, just better human beings with all of us. And just a reminder that the WCM Code of Conduct for Volunteer Coaches does require that we respect all students, which is why we're bringing all this information to all of you to front load and help us understand um, how to make coaching as successful as possible. And then if anything ever does come up, WCM staff will be in touch. We can offer individual feedback if it's a specific issue that comes up through a private conversation. And then at the end of each semester, we have a mass email that goes out to all coaches called wins and reminders. And it shows highlights, things that coaches have done really amazingly that we can all learn from. And then reminders can be um, a general learning experience. Oh yeah, this happened and we wanted to remind everyone that this is the way that we can move forward more effectively in these situations in the future. So again, embracing those growth mindsets together. So we just wanted to thank you for taking the time. We know there's always something uh, that you could be doing with your time. And it's really important that you were here with us today. And we really appreciate it because we care deeply about the students that we work with. We care deeply about Montana and about the schools and partners that we work with. And we think the most important thing um, that we can do is help all of us invest in those relationships so that we can enact our, our vision as an organization that to support all Montana students. So if you're interested in looking at some of the conversations that parallel these topics that we've had in the past, you can check out our website there at the bottom. We have a YouTube channel with some recorded conversations. And then for future conversations that are similar to this, you can check out our email newsletter that's going to come monthly in your inbox for future volunteer meetups and other conversations as, um, as they're scheduled. So thank you so much for being with us here today. Um, and Dr. Chin, is there anything else that you'd like to say as well? I want to say thank you so much for being with us, Writing Coaches of Montana. We so value and appreciate you. I know the teachers and the students value and appreciate your service and contributions. Um, we don't exist without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, for all of those who wants to look further into these topics and where we're getting this information, you can check out our references here or get in touch with me, uh, Cassie at writingcoachesofmontana.org. Thank you again and take care.